Have you ever had this crazy idea to be multiple people at the same time so you could play games while your clone works? But then Mutiny hates, your clone has had enough of your nonsense. He doesn't want to work either, he wants to play. You know what has to happen. He needs to go. But deep down, you know he's part of you. Still, he's gotta go. Hey, 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 that's getting a little dark. Back to the program. Oh yes, I almost forgot. Today we're diving into multi-threading and the synchronous programming, two essential techniques for making Python programs faster and more efficient. Let's get into it. So what is multi-threading? Well, multi-threading simply means multiple threads. But now you might be wondering, what even is a thread? I mean, who really knows? Probably ChatGPT or God. But jokes aside, here's what matters. Multi-threading isn't how programs normally run, so before we can understand it, we need to talk about how a program usually works. By default, Python runs one task at a time in a single thread. This is called single-threaded execution. You can think of a thread like a road, and your code is the car driving on it. To keep that car moving, you need power, and in this case, the power comes from your CPU. Now, this is a really complex topic. See, programming languages aren't just magic. They're built by people who deeply understand operating systems, hardware, and all sorts of system design wizardry. Honestly, if I had to build a language from scratch, we'd probably be banging on a computer part with sticks, hoping they do something. You can actually see this in action when you call multiple functions in a Python script. They run one after the other in order. Nothing fancy, just one car on one road. So now that we've cleared that up, let me ask you again, what is multi-threading? Think you've got it now? Drop your take in the comments. Multi-threading is all about doing multiple things at the same time instead of one after the other. It could mean running separate functions in parallel or even splitting one task into chunks and executing them concurrently to get things done faster. It's super handy for things like uploading files. Why do it one by one when you can upload five at once? And to see how that actually works in practice, let's jump into some examples. In this code, we're looping through a list of fake image objects. Each one has a read time, simulating how long it takes to load. The function read false data waits with time sleep, and then prints out the file name and timestamp. We measure how long it takes to go through the full list, and since each task runs one after the other, the total time is just the sum of all delays. You can see exactly what we expect. The program processes one file at a time, waiting for each one to finish before starting the next. The output is clean, ordered, and slow. Now here's the upgrade. Instead of running them one by one, we use the threading module to launch a separate thread for each file. We call threading.thread with our target function and pass each image as an argument. Then we start all the threads and wait for them to finish using join. Now that is much better. The slowest file took 5 seconds, but all the waiting happened at the same time. And that's the power of multi-threading. This isn't just faster, it's smarter. Especially when tasks don't need to block each other. With a simple switch from a loop to threads, we cut our execution time from 15 seconds down to just 5. That's a 3 times speed up, and we didn't even change what the code does, just how it runs. Now let's not forget, this is all a fake example. In the real world, you won't always see such dramatic gains. That's the magic of controlled fakeness at work here. But it does show you what's possible when you use multi-trading wisely. I once used it to speed up file uploads to AWS, and what took a minute dropped down to just 10 seconds. That kind of boost, very real. Now let's talk about asynchronous programming, also known as async. This isn't about creating threads or spinning up extra CPU power anymore. Instead, it's about writing functions that can pause while waiting for something, like an API to respond or a file to load, and then resume later without freezing your whole program. Or like waiting in line for some tasty donuts. You have to pause your hunger, but once it's your turn, you go all in. Here's a basic example using Python's AsyncIO module. We define an asynchronous function using async-def, inside it, await async.sleep2 tells Python, pause here, 
let someone else do something while I wait. Unlike a normal time sleep, this doesn't freeze the whole program. It's like telling Python, hey, hold my spot, I'll be back in two seconds. Meanwhile, the rest of the line keeps moving. Other functions can jump in and do their thing. That's great for one task, but what if you had multiple of these running at once? Here, we use a sync.gather to run both tasks at the same time. Each one handles its own delay independently. While task 1 is sleeping for 2 seconds, task 2 starts, finishes and moves on. Boom! Just like that, tasks overlap without threads. Everything stays clean, lightweight and efficient. That's the real power of async. Letting tasks work together, not wait on each other. This pattern is perfect for I.O. bound operations like fetching APIs, reading files or talking to databases. Anything where you're mostly waiting. You're not speeding things up with more CPU, you're just using your time smarter. So how do you choose between multi-trading and async? It's not just about CPU versus I.O. It's about how your tasks behave. It's about how you want to live. Are you an async bro or a multi-trading bro? You need to choose this decision. It's gonna define your life. Okay, maybe not your whole life, but definitely your program's performance. If your program needs to juggle lots of active work, like uploading files, resizing images or crunching numbers, multi-trading is your go-to. You're actually doing things at the same time. But if your tasks are mostly about waiting, like calling multiple APIs or loading files from disk, then async is your best friend. It keeps your code moving instead of blocking while it waits. So to simplify, multi-threading is for when your code is busy. Async is for when your code is waiting. Ok, time to combine our powers. Let's say you've got a bunch of text files, maybe articles, maybe top secret documents, maybe ChatGPT wrote them all, doesn't matter. We want to upload them in parallel using multi-threading, then fetch a summary for each one using async, because of course AI, you know, the one powered by cloud magic. Let's build it out. Each file gets its own thread, so instead of uploading them one by one, 10 seconds total, they all upload together in about 2 seconds. Fast, parallel, no waiting around. Now that the files are uploaded, we request summaries asynchronously. Each request runs on its own, and the fastest one finishes first. No blocking, no queue, just pure async vibes. Talking to Sam Altman in the cloud, uh, probably. You know, the one powered by cloud magic. This tiny project brings it all together, multi-trading for active work, uploads, async for passive weights, summaries. It's clean, it's fast, it's kinda beautiful. And hopefully, it helped you finally get it. And yes. In the real world, you'd probably need error handling, retries, logging, timeouts and god knows what more. But this is vibe coding, and we live on the edge here. To bring everything together, we explored how concurrency in Python can make your programs faster and more efficient. Multithreading is your go-to when you're doing multiple things at once, especially when those things are CPU intensive. Asynchronous programming, on the other hand, shines when your task involves a lot of waiting, like network requests or slow file reads. Now it's your turn. I did a goofy example, but maybe you can take the idea and turn it into something cool. Here's a challenge, take a bunch of text files, extract the text from each one and use multithreading to process them in parallel. Once the text is ready, use async to send summary requests. You could hit the ChatGPT or Cloud APIs for summaries. Or if you're saving those API credits, install Olama and run it locally. Yep, it has an API too. Concurrency plays AI? Magic. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes in the comments. I'd love to see what you come up with. If this helped you out, go ahead and like, subscribe and share it with someone learning Python. And as always, I'll see you in the next dimension.